can find ourselves facing as well as confronting a host of different situations and circumstances on this journey of life each and every day. Sometimes we find ourselves being overwhelmed by, by, by the changing vicissitudes of life and by the ebbing and flowing that comes unexpectedly. Sometimes when we think we have a handle on what we can expect, we are reminded of what Paul said, how, how we wrestle. Uh, and, and, and that means close up and unexpectedly, the changing vicissitudes of life can come at us. And so we find ourselves confronting these changes. Sometimes without an idea or plan. Sometimes without even a strategy for escape. And without a guard on our side we would and could be overwhelmed. Now, we who are the believers of Christ, there are some things we know. We know our enemy, Satan, is loose in the same world we occupy. Yes, we are in the world, but not of the world. So we know some things. We know some things. We know that Satan is loose in the same world we occupy, and we also know that Satan has power. Satan has power. He is seeking and seeing whom he may devour. He is seeking and seeing whom he may make ashamed, and he is seeking and seeing whom he can make doubt, or curse God and die. Right. It, it was Job's wife who, who had received all of the benefits of the blessing. Right. When trouble came and the changing vicissitudes of life were upon her, she said to her husband, the source of all that she had enjoyed, she said, why don't you curse God and die? Right. So Satan is seeking and see whom he may try to make a shame and curse God and die. But those of us whose minds have been renewed, those of us whose souls have been redeemed, and especially those of us who have become new creatures in Christ are not uneasy. I'm not uneasy. It's good to feel that way, isn't it? It's good to be able to stand on what you know and stand on what God is and say to your soul, my soul is not uneasy regardless of what comes, regardless of what goes, Regardless of who and what does what and where, my soul is not at ease. With that being said, let us turn for the next few moments to the 13th chapter of, of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Matthew the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24, and concluding with verse 30. And uh, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sow good seed in his feet. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and 
went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt you then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Least while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tags and bind them in bundles to burn. But gather the wheat into my lawn. In this text, this parable, or to use a more modern description, this illustration, centers on four aspects of life, everyday life, similar to what we may face and what we may encounter ourselves. First of all, aspect number one is the field owner. Aspect number two is the enemy. Aspect number three are the workers. Aspect number four is the decision. Look at it with us now. So that we may make this manageable, let us keep our discussion in the personal realm. The Lord was making a comparison and an analogy. He was looking at the situation that presented itself and he was comparing the kingdom of heaven. Because it starts out by saying, even as the Old Testament, New Testament scripture, for the kingdom of heaven is like yes. unto a man that is a household. Here the Lord is saying, the kingdom of heaven is like. In other words, church, what the Lord is saying is that there are some situations that you will face here that you need to encounter and master and deal with in order for you to be presentable to the kingdom of heaven and eligible to make it in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you will have had to overcome some difficulty. You will have had to overcome some doubt. You will have even had to overcome yourself if you can expect to make it to the kingdom of heaven. But I also would remind us that before we can get to the kingdom of heaven, before you and I can get there, we have to deal with our heaven on earth as well as our hell on earth right here around us. Huh? Now, the owner, I realize that when you read further in chapter 13, the Lord explains it in terms of the field owner being God. But as I said before, let us make it manageable and let us make it personal and let us bring it down on your street down at your house, down where you live. And so let us say, for the sake of our argument, that the field owner 
is each one of us. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. We make plans. We strategize. We go to school. We plan our careers. We prepare ourselves. We do the best on our job. And sometimes whatever you're doing, all you can do, the enemy comes and sow on some tears in your feet. While you sleep, the enemy is safe. The enemy is declared. Can you, can you go back with me? Satan had a, an exalted position in glory. Satan had a position where, where, where praise went by his desk before it got to the Lord's desk. And Satan became lifted up in himself that he wanted the praise to come to him and instead of being through him. And then that's a book like that. That they ain't satisfied with the praise getting through. They want to stop the praise and glorify it. But I come to tell us that praise belongs to God. The amen belongs to God. The hallelujah belongs to God. God, hallelujah, brought it all to pass. The enemy is anyone who seeks your downfall. Yes. And, and, and unless you get caught up in yourself, the enemy can be ourselves when we engage in and involve ourselves in self-destructive behavior. The enemy can be your familiar acquaintance. You see, Satan does not care who he uses. He keeps wants to best use someone close to you. He wants to best use someone who you let in. He wants to best use someone who you would least expect to be the enemy and sow some tears in your meal. Now, now, the workers, they become very important in the parable. The workers come to the owner of the field. And they said, now, sir, we know you know seed. Some of y'all who grow gardens, you know you know seed. When you grow greens, you know enough to mix them Mustard seed seeds yeah. along with some sand. Yeah. So you don't have a whole bunch of mustard seeds in one place. You want to spread them out. Uh -huh. yeah. So these workers come to the owner of the field. They said, sir, we got a problem. Uh, we went out when the field started to grow. We find that uh, in the midst of these blooms that you have planted up, the midst of the blooms that have come up, we find some tags. Yes. Yes. Did you not, the first thing you asked him, did you know what you was doing? <laughs> did you plant some good seed? Yes. But the owner didn't get excited. Right. He said, listen here, now, I, I, I know about planting. This is not the first time I, I put my crop out. So if there are some tares amongst the wheat, an enemy has done this thing. And there's one thing that you must understand here, that, that, that the tares in this case was the Darnell plant. And the Darnell plant looks just like wheat uh, when they grow up. So you see, if the workers had been allowed to go out and root up what they thought was the town. They could root up some good wheat. So what happens is that the owner knew some things. That's why you can't nobody run your life like you can run your life. You know what you're planted 
in your vineyard. You know what, what kind of plan you had on the drawing board for a long time. You know where you're trying to go and how you want to get there. Even if the enemy has sown some tares in your field, you feel like this land on the hill. The land on the don't you worry about it. Uh, uh, workers, I, I like your zeal. Yeah. Workers, I like your insight. Yeah. But this is my field. Right. And I, I know what I've sown. Yeah. And I know the kind of seed that I put in. Yeah. If there are tares in the wheat, the enemy has done this thing at night. But I've come to tell that what's done at night will come to light in the daytime. Yeah. And so the owner of the field said, don't worry about it. This is my field. Yeah. And I know how to look over my feet. I just want you to do one thing. You keep on chopping. They don't say chopping no more, do they? You keep on weeding out between the wheat and the tares. And after a while, they'll both grow up. And after a while, they'll both mature. But you see, the one thing you must realize, even though wheat or tares look like wheat, when the harvest time comes, they don't look like they the same thing at the harvest time. And so the owner of the field said, let them grow together because I know what to do. When, I, when they grow up together, I'm going to send workers out. Yes, Lord, I'm going to send those workers out that can tell the difference between wheat and tares. And I'm going to have the tares cut down first and let the wheat stay there. But when the tares are cut down, I'm going to have those tares brought to my barn and I'm going to burn those tares up. In other words, church, if you are tares sore in life, be careful. If you are out there sowing tares for folk that have sown good wheat, watch out because you're already determining your outcome. Can I get a witness? And the Lord said that the Lord of the field said to the workers, the my decision is to let them grow up together. Right. Mm, there are folks in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who look like tags, but some of them were just weak wheat. Can't get a witness. Well, if I had to call up a witness, I'd call up David. David was a man who the prophet Samuel yeah. had gone to his house yeah. while he was still a little lad yeah. and spoken a word of blessings yeah. over his life. Yeah. David made it yeah. from the sheep goat to the palace. Yeah. That was before I'm talking about now. Before he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. He went through some stuff. He was in Saul's house, and Saul tried to kill him. Yes, he was. He was, even after he escaped and became the king, he looked over there and saw that man's wife. Did he do it? Took her to be his own wife. Sin. Is a breeding ground. Yeah. Lust. Yeah. They got murder. Yeah. Did he do it? Yeah. When you look back on David, uh -huh. you might think that David was a tad, but David was in development. Right. And the Lord said, David is a man after my own heart. Right. What I'm trying to say, church, as a worker, you don't have the right to tell the field owner how to let the wheat and the tares go up. All you got to do is wait. Hey, there's a change coming. Wait until the harvest time. Wait. Have patience. Don't get in a hurry. Don't tell God how to do his job. He said, where will you be glad to? He said, Joe, where were you when I stepped out of time? Where were you when I Everything is going to be all right. So, some of us 
in this room yes. are well acquainted yes. with our well-ordered plan uh -huh. coming under attack. Yes. Somebody has tried to sow attack, yes. but the Lord is telling us that the forces against us yes. will come, but great is he yes. that there is in the world. The Lord said he's able. Don't you know he's able? Can he make everything all right? Can he fix it? Yes, he will. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Lord is saying the weeping may endure for the night. Moses, yes. 
Didn't you just see a bush burning and didn't burn up? Didn't I just make your stick into a snake? Wait, wait. 